if he had an Ags or a Refresher, it would have been great that game. But uh, he's a support Where is going to come from? I mean, right, exactly. Well, unless he went Midas, but I mean, he All could right. have actually gone Midas, though. We've got game three up, folks. Let's go. Let's get into this draft. Let's see what these teams are cooking up here. Shen, okay, Ark well. Warden, banned out. I think uh, no both, surprise there. Yep, <sighs> both teams banning out their favorite and the other team's favorite heroes, it seems. There's a lot of good heroes in this Vegas pool. Still an Earth Spirit that will most likely back. get one of these third bands. Mm -hmm, you there are so. some dirty heroes and in this pool. Possibly an Omni Knight ban could be warranted here. Is also, it, the Beastmaster was banned out uh, in game two, if I'm not mistaken. They, there's a lot of Agi heroes Even being Jesus banned, like the Void as well as the back. Ember. So there's only a couple of... There's like AM that was in the last game. Shadowfiend is okay. Razor has been picked a ton. He's got an 80% win in this tournament with like a couple of picks like eight picks or something i wonder what vega have their eyes on for first pick because uh and the, the ember spirit ban is a little bit interesting to me beastmaster could be an option um i don't know if they play earth spirit i don't does EG have an earth spirit timing. player if that makes yeah, it fear plays it, yeah. can play it you they have to pay here you can't let they, they're thinking they're like do they have an earth spirit player and no they're gonna give it i don't think you can give it vega second pick to eg but we'll to see pick. yeah if vega lets it throw what else is first pick material though really uh, well, EG like first a, picked Enigma like last It's Beastmaster or, or, or Earth Spirit, I feel like. Those are the two. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. Razor uh, could also right. be a good first pick here. We've talked about Razor and Viper, kind of a similar dynamic. And just the lane dominator is very good in Captain's Draft. Yeah, but that would be so bad for Earth Spirit just roaming in, rolling <laughs> boulder, just yeah. you know, that Earth Spirit. No, nope, it Whoa. is the Enigma sec first pick two Even games Jesus in a row now. But on the other side of the coin, Vega will take it. Yep. Interesting. Yes, both teams love the greediness. The, we could lose a lane, but at least we're winning the jungle. So the only good counter here is Beastmaster, yeah, exactly, Spirit, and the Earth wow. Spirit. So okay, no surprise there. I think the top two heroes left in the pool. They get both of them. I'm really surprised they let our Spirit get thrown, didn't pick it. But yeah. <laughs> Me too, Grant. I, I just, too. I guess they just, I, I, I need to go through Vega's old games and see if they've ever picked it here, but I, I don't really I don't, remember. I, them I can't think of a time it. I've ever seen them play. Yeah, I, I don't know if they really play that. That which is interesting. I feel like they can. So it was a really good micro well, player, but I hate to sound like a broken record and bring up the push, but it is an option for Vega here. Yep. Jakiro, Dragonite Vega's in the pool again, and they won't go that route. Which Doctor Doom Evil instead? Mm. I like this. I like the the stun, the doom being the doom's gonna have to be somewhere though, since Enigma's gonna be in the jungle. Obviously, doom will be somewhere, but it's gonna have to be carrier and offlane doom with the Enigma now, unless they want to put him offlane. Uh, offlane doom's not bad. I think, I think he's like solo safe lane and run an aggro dueling with another hero. Like, oh, oh boy, sweet Jesus! Hazel yeah. Terrorblade. So what's the deal with Terrorblade, Grant? We have seen him very little this tournament. Well, if he gets either dual or tri lane he just dies i mean with the reflection buff it's really nice and obviously metamorphosis but that cooldown's like more than probably 80 percent of the ults with how long it is and mm -hmm. the buff on reflection is really they good, have though. a dazzle so they can heal him but yeah, yeah he's one of the squishier heroes. and i think they notice there's no burst damage on vega right now and that's what really kills terror blade yeah. but without burst damage it's gonna be pretty hard to deal with this Terror Blade if he gets free farm early again. Okay, okay. so Razor Night Stalker. Um, so we've got a funky core here. I guess that means a Night Stalker and more of a driver's seat role. Maybe is it off lane Night Stalker, safe lane Doom, Doom, mid Razor. They can set these lanes up a, a whole bunch of different ways. That's Captain's Draft. Yeah, <laughs> they, they really and that's Dallas. <laughs> All right, EG, what's your final pick here? Most likely going to be a middle hero. Puck, I believe. I think it'd be a good Puck. choice here. We haven't seen Shadow Fiend in a bit. Tiny is still in the pool a, at the top. I didn't even notice I him. I think they need a DK. good team fighter to pull together, though. Like, Puck with some utility. Yeah. Maybe Tinker. Oh, I think pretty unlikely, but maybe EG want to style a little bit here in game could. three, up to now. Tinker's been a South American special recently, so yeah. I don't know if Sumail wants to grab that, though. Yeah, this they really have options. They could be like, Sumail, do you want to kill people? Do you want to see if that tiny somehow got through all the way, or do you want to play the more? Okay, the there you go. Go. Hey, very good. I think that silence is just so yeah. good against Witch Doctor Enigma. You got two yes. channeling ultimates. It's good stuff to have. This, you know, okay, Razor You're ready. Yeah. All um, right. Well, another scary draft for EG. Earth Spirit going to be played in Game 3 of the Finals. We'll see. Is this going to be a 3-0, or can they take it to Game 4? Suns fan and Purge, take it away. Welcome back to Game 3 of the Grand Finals of the PIA Captain's Draft 3.0 presented by Dota Cinema and Moondock TV. My name is Suns Fan, joined by Pimp on Observer slash Production and Purge doing Hello. analysis. Welcome, friend. So the draft looked a little interesting for me. I was very surprised about the, the um, Terrorblade pick um, along with the couch, Prepare but I think that. the reason that Terrorblade got picked is because there just weren't that many carries left. It was like Razor, um, could have been like Tiny, 
there was a couple, but they weren't all that amazing. So I think he just decided this was the best carry for the for the job. And I think Puck's going to synergize decently with it since it will be able to create him some space. But if he gets doomed, I feel like the fights are just kind of over for EG. I mean, they do have a lot of damage source coming from other places such as Earth Spirit, Puck, and Beastmaster. But if he gets doomed and he doesn't metamorphosis in time, then you've got a Dazzle who's not outputting damage. You've yeah. got a Beastmaster who kind of is. Puck is kind of putting out damage. I don't know. I just, I'm not sure that if this is the right hero. Might have a level one engagement here in the Radiant jungle, but Vega's going to back off, it seems. Now, keep in mind, of course, as far as dooming, seconds, until you get that Manta style, you don't really confuse the doom because the illusions from Conjure Image are, mm -hmm. they look completely, they look like, uh, I guess, like the Dark Seer illusions, yep. I guess is the best way to put it. So no confusion there for the Doom player who's being played. Actually, Posh is playing Doom. Interesting. Okay. Okay, so it's going to be carry Doom. Um, I assume he's probably going to go for like Phase Drum, typical carry Doom build lately. Um, not sure how he'll transition. Top Rune looks like they're laying a trap. Actually, this could be pretty bad for our team. They get the Void up. Reflection is used as a countermeasure, but no one's going to deal a little bit of chip damage and steal quite a bit in the meantime and get the bounty room for himself. He's at the bottom room. Is so now... Getting it all by his lonesome. That really wasn't too bad for Artizi. Um, luckily, Terrorblade has tons of armor, so he's very resistant to physical damage. Um, Mag is going to be playing an offline Night Stalker, which I think actually it might be a 1v1, depending on how long it takes the sports to come top. But uh, I think this looks pretty good for Vega in terms of lanes. Razor probably won't die to Puck. Um, Puck probably will be pressured by Razor a little bit. The safe lane is obviously going to be a Witch Doctor and a Doom um, versus a offlane uh, Beastmaster. Yeah, it should be an interesting setup. Obviously, Captain Stuff giving us a lot of weird matchups overall. As Posh in the meantime, bottom lane, getting pressured out by Fear with that Orb of Venom. What an annoying ass hero that is, Earth Fear. Yeah. He's going to get turned on, though, Ooh. by the right clicks of both Sioma and Pasha. Of course, keep in mind that Doom's base attack time is, I believe, the slowest in the game. I think so. Uh, Alchemist, I think, is the second slide. I don't know. I don't know why I'm doing rankings right now. But I don't know, man. The, the only thing about Doom, though, is you can obviously eat a creep to increase your attack speed. Um, actually, wait. Does that still do that? Which um, creep increases attack speed? Or none of them now. It's just the damage, right? Oh, he has oh, it right yeah, now? Yeah, that's right. The swiftness where I forgot about this okay, one. Okay, yeah. Recent addition. All right. Despite being out for a while now, Terrorblade has only been in 65 competitive Dota games. This is 100% more games than Arc Warden, except for that one Arc Warden game. And God, out of all I, the ones I decided I, to read, it was actually the, the worst. The worst. And he always spells Arc Warden with a K. It's like I, Raiders just, of the Lost Arc Warden. Just trying to make us really hate life. <laughs> and uh, it's working. Congratulations, Slax. You've done it. Purge wants to kill himself now. <laughs> All right, so back into the safe lane here. Uh, Universe is level two, is getting some decent levels. The off lane, Night Soccer, pretty much same boat. So it seems like both off laners are doing decently well. In terms of the mid lane, raises up to nine last hits versus the four of Puck, actually. So no one's doing quite well in mid as Razor. But it's a hard lane for a Puck, really. He can't really trade hits nearly as well. Razor's got higher armor. Actually, it's about the same. But um, once he starts sapping damage, Sumail kind of has to get away as fast as possible, sometimes using orb for it. And we're seeing a kind of a reverse of fortune here for, uh, oh, as we're going to see some action bot lane first, Pasha. Takes a little bit of damage, of course has Scorched Earth Fear with the Haste Rune on that Earth Spirit. But I was going to say, Vega Squadron now has the quote-unquote greedier lineup with the Enigma being in the jungle. We'll see if they can take advantage of the out-leveling slash out-golding, <laughs> that's the term. I, out I like that term. Out-golding. I'm golding faster than yes, you. Yes, I'm golding very nicely. But... EG has, they took advantage of that to a high degree in the last couple games, and... Oh, Meg could get pressured a little bit. No, he's not going to win. He's got seven armor and a poor man's shield. It's, it's normally not an item you pick up on anything other than agility heroes, but if you're being harassed a lot, it basically gives you an extra armor and can block up to an extra five damage or something like that. It's very good against a weak, weak so harass. We don't get to see Terrorblade too often. Is this still the, essentially the same build where you go drums pretty much every game with Tread and then into something like a Manta, Scotty... Yeah, things basically. of that nature. Uh, the boots choice kind of depends on the player on whether you do brown boots or you go into treads, but either one is going to be fine here. Uh, but Artiz will probably spend a lot of time jungling with Conjure Images later. Um, whether or not he can do that, we'll see, um, because there is sometimes an enigma. But uh, Is there any potential, I don't want to see this personally because it feels just like Alchemist, but okay. any potential to go Radiance? There is, on yes. Terrorblade. Oh, yeah, you can do the Radiance build. I don't think this is necessarily the game to do it, but Radiance can be built. Okay. 
Um, no one forcing Sumail out, although no one himself is pretty damn low. Sumail is getting out leveled in this lane by a pretty hefty margin, in fact. Yeah, I think Sumail's had to get more runes or something like that, but he has been zoned a bit. Well, um, no one's going to get the top rune this time, as Solo is going to be here for moral support. Gives him a, uh, makes a tree form, gives him a super tango here. And with the arcane rune, Razor should be able to lane quite well here, because he can then reduce the cooldown of a static link when he goes for it. It's kind of cool. I really like the arcane rune. At first I thought it would be super overpowered, but now it kind of just becomes a lower cooldown of one of your skills that you use. And, and the lower mana can be really useful also, but the lower cooldown is the main one. It does make, uh, when you have an octarine core in addition to it, it completely broken. Yeah, <laughs> I'm Especially sure. on a hero like Puck, and that would be hilarious to see this game, although it's not too common you see a Puck with an octarine, but I think, what is it, phase shift has 100% uptime, is the, uh, is that what it goes down would, to. Be really cool. Well, we have mid lane gank attempt by Fury. He's gonna miss. No one gets bashed up a bit and takes an illusory orb. He's gonna steal a little bit of damage, but he'll be healthy enough to stay in the lane. He's gotta land that rolling boulder. It does a lot of damage. I think about 100. Um, so he loses damage. He loses the 80% movement and attack speed slow that he could have put on Razor. So if you miss that rolling boulder, then you're not getting value out of your hero. And right now, Fury's only level two. He's getting a little under leveled. Top lane. They were trying to force Mag out, but Mag's dealing the most damage right now against the, the PPD Dazzle, who's level four and a half, so leveling quite well for PPD. Yeah. This is something we saw, what was it? It was the last game or the game before? Uh, it was the Witch Doctor. I think it was game one, where he just got a ton of levels. Yeah. He was level 11. I think it was like three or four levels ahead of the opposing supports. Yeah, he did great that game. And Universe is almost six, though, so I feel like EG is winning their offlane battle a bit. Night Stalker only four here. And his ability to kill either Terrorblade or Dazzle, it's just not there until one of them leaves the lane. So if they just stand together here, um, it really offsets uh, Terrorblade's weak survivability that he has in the early game. He uses Metamorphosis now, increases his base damage by a huge Radiant amount, and they're just going to start pushing towers. Fortified. And with Radiant Fear, tower I mean, that's the thing attack. about playing against Earth Spirit, too. You just never know where he is and when he will be able to gank. And the fact that he can do it pretty effectively at level one or two is bottom lane. We're going to see that come to fruition. He's oh, going to kick smash. the Doom back into the tier one tower, but Doom is dealing a lot of damage. His fear is going to be first blooded by the Witch Doctor, surprisingly enough. And the heal is just ridiculous with both Voodoo Restoration and uh, Scorched Earth from Doom himself. Dazzle forced to TP back to base there, but um, it was a nice boulder smash from Fear to punch the Doom under the tower to get more tower hits in, but the problem was that Doom was just healing for, what, 40, 30 HP per second when he turns on Scorched Earth, so some of those kills are just so hard to do. And when you punch, then it doesn't stun them, so it might have been better for him to go for the stun instead. Um, on the other side of the map, the Enigma's actually been a little bit underleveled. They did block a lot of his camps with Sentry Ward in the beginning of the lane. And Sumail again is just getting so much damage sapped here. Like, he actually can only last hit by using spells. Yeah, and he's only rough. got 25 versus Razor's 30. Okay, that's pretty amazing. <laughs> Sumail does this all the time. So I feel like if you, get, if you get all your damage sapped and it actually becomes negative, you should heal. What are your thoughts on that? Um, I think that actually works if somebody has refraction. There's some like weird, weird interaction with like refraction. I think where you can <laughs> heal. Nice, Slack. Very fitting. That's yeah. See, that's what happens when you when you uh, make fun of Slack. You come back with a stat and stuff it in your face. I mean, that's that's at a, least that's the attempt. <laughs> that's a great stat, dude. That's accurate. So now in the go. meantime, he's oh. now this up. He's silenced as well, voided now in addition. Female Great Slayer. TV. He's going to lose the reward out. Sumail in quite a bit of trouble. Oh, the the cask. cask will bounce only one time as Sumail. The right click should suffice, and down he goes as a 2 advantage for Vega. As PPD is next on the list, Mag with a void very shortly will start off with a crippling fear. And very nice rotations from Vega, the although old. they do end up in the dire ancient area. I love the phase shift. Oh, RTC's oh, RTC got this. Metamorphosis is going to deal a lot of damage. Mag is just stuck in place. The universe cast, with the wild axes. Shioma gets stunned in the back line. RTZ is doomed up like you talked about. There's just nothing he can do once that comes out. And a 4-0 advantage for Vega despite being on US East. Dude, they just ran him down there. There was, like, I thought it was a little scary, but that cast came out from the Witch Doctor, and it just ultra hard counters the Terrorblade, because him and his illusion just keep getting stunned, so despite his damage looking pretty good there, and he looked really imposing and big, he probably only had 700-800 HP, and once he gets doomed and nuked once or twice, yeah, RT he just er, goes down. Not RTZ, but Terrorblade is just such an awkward hero sometimes. Yeah. It feels like in the early game, he can just get dominated if you just throw a couple of ganks. Of course, he, he's the one that TP'd into that fight, so felt yeah. pretty confident. I mean, Metamorphosis, if you're left alone, he's going to deal ridiculous damage. But... Yeah, gives him 80 bonus damage. It's like a double damage, more or less. But any magic nuke, like like you said, he's just so low on HP, but very high in armor. Mm -hmm. Like He'll be good throughout this game against like the Death Lord and things of that nature, but the magic damage is where it's really scary for Arteezy. 
But yeah, it, when he's on agility treads, he has 674 HP. That's nothing. He's going to be very weak. Does he have the worst strength gain or starting strength in, in the game or close to it? It's got to be up there. It's got to be close. The strength gain is 1.4, which is really Disgusting low. Disgusting and bad, yeah. But as he buys a lot of stat items, his HP does get pretty high. So as the game continues longer and longer, this can be a, a less of an issue for him. Well, EG's going to group up and they're going to take the uncontested tier 1 tower bottom. In the meantime, Vega doing some damage to the tier 1 mid. We'll see if EG mounts a defense or not. Fortification is popped. And Pasha right now is going to go for the drums, as you talked about, and probably Vlad. So it's going to be an aura type utility doom. And I assume maybe a blink dagger after the fact. Some they're sort of initiation possibility. They're pretty happy to take these trades. Um, yeah, absolutely. Again, Vega has is up four to zero, and but with EG getting too many towers, they can really offset that gold advantage that they get by kills. So getting that tier one tower mid is huge. Means that the ganks from Vega can be a lot more straightforward, uh, and that's something Night Stalker is going to do at nighttime. Once it becomes night, he's going to want to move around the map looking for those kills. Asha, Doom is up in seven seconds. It's going to be pretty difficult to get Fear caught off guard considering it is daytime, and. We haven't really seen the Night Stalker nighttime come into effect too much yet. Yeah. He is level 6 right now, about to hit level 7. Uh, is it the next nighttime that he, you think he needs to make some sort of a... I mean, he's made an impact, obviously, but he, he can, can start just, solo ganking at some point. Yeah, right? he can do that now as well. He didn't actually grab his ultimate um, before he grabbed two Hunter of the Knights, which is you know, just a little bit of a preference for Night Stalker. So he had to guarantee that he got 7 so that he could get his ultimate, and now he could do some roaming. But... Prior to that, he basically had to wait till nighttime. So he could definitely do some pressure, but there's not really a lot of heroes that he can kill. The one that he's probably best against is maybe Terrorblade and Puck, just because the silence is really crucial to stopping them from getting kills. Not Dazzle? Um, Dazzle is kind of hard. I don't think he can kill Dazzle in time. Um, he can silence him, obviously, and delay things, but he needs to use Void to slow him. So if he silences and voids, then Dazzle just TPs. Yeah, in a lot true. of cases, we'll just Grave TP. Yeah. So I wouldn't really say he's that amazing against Dazzle. And it's not really here you want to gank anyways. He's got low net worth, so yeah. better to go for that. I mean, with the build guys. that Doom, or Pasha's going on Doom, expect the aggression just to continue now. Um, solo. Don't think we've seen a black hole yet. Has the mechanism up and running? Oh, he's got a weird skill build too. Only went three in demonic conversion. Mid lane in the meantime, PPD, like we talked about, he gets silenced up and voided. Could, Could potentially TP, but okay. there you go. Yeah, he's not too scared. He's got backup coming. That's exactly what happens. Like, Dazzle is not that scary. He did use his ultimate, but the reason he did this is because it's almost nighttime anyways. And this is going to limit the vision of EG here. Oh. Mag gets stunned up and the coil on top of it. Did they have enough damage to actually take him out? The Uzi Orb will miss. TP support is coming, and Siona's going to heal him up with that Voodoo Restoration. PPD taking lots of damage from the Tier 1 tower. And in the end, Samael's ult is wasted. Yeah, this is very good for Vega because they're still pressuring bottom, so not much happens mid there. Uh, last hit goes to Doom, and they can keep pushing if they want. Vega is a little bit more spread out, so they're getting slightly more efficient gold game. What kind of a build do you think Razor goes for as far as items are concerned? We've, we've seen okay, a variation um, as of late. Of course, with Doom going utility, do you go a little bit more in the damage department with uh, Razor? Or you still go the typical... Uh, I don't know, like S and Y. Yeah, I, hybrid I stats know. might be the best. If he goes to BKB, then Terrorblade still kills him and he can still get roared. Uh, he would take less damage from Earth Spirit, though. That part would be nice. Um, BKB would be good against Puck. Um, Dazzle kind of amps physical damage, so I, I think it might be safer just to do the generic stat items. So that way it covers both bases, gives you HP, and makes you good against physical damage. So I think S and Y maybe and do... I don't know if Ags is a good pickup because there's so many Beastmaster illusions and stuff. Mm. And Beastmaster creeps, illusions on Terrorblade, that may not be the right option. Um, and also he does have to worry about the swap from Terrorblade, so at some point mid-game he will have to get BKB, because otherwise Thunder can just reduce his HP from like low to, or high to nothing. I haven't seen too many smoke ganks yet this game, which is a little bit surprising, especially considering you have the Night Stalker who can take full advantage of the... Oh, as I say that, they smoke up. Okay, perfect timing. <laughs> it is nighttime, of course. Uh, darkness is not applied right now, so the vision isn't going to be as mitigated. Or as hindered, I should say, as is usually the case. Ancient stacked a little bit. They're going to see Maybe. RTZ. Yeah, they... Well, they Ooh, see the they illusion, this? and I think RTZ knew. He had a I mean, decent idea. They could... If they would have ran right, they can go for this. They could sneak past the tier, between the tier 1 and the tier 2 and go into the jungle where he is. And that's what they're going to do. Oh, boy. This is great. Sioma way ahead of his team right now. It's going to have to wait up. see the courier? Can they get the courier, the courier? They're going to go for it. Dyer's that could actually save Arteezy's life. That might even be worth it. But they're going to continue the pressure. Drums are popped. Arteezy going to take the plasma field damage. Gets... Silence oh, up just... by Mag. There's the death ward. Do they have enough stuns and slows? Indeed they do. And Arteezy, PPD was very close to getting Shallow Grave off, by the way. That, that was a Grave nerf right there. That cast animation could have came through and got it. So Absolutely. huge gank there for Vega.
not only did they kill the carry bot, they got the enemy courier, so it's equivalent to getting a tower. So now that they can push again, and they didn't even use that much. That was like Death Ward. They didn't have to Doom. They didn't have yeah. to Black Hole. Maybe they'll take Roche instead. And Vlad is almost complete for Pasha on top of the drums, which are already in his inventory. And the Roche attempt, as he talked about, is underway. Universe. I mean, that, this is a nice game to have a Beastmaster against the Night Stalker because of that uh, division you're going to be getting from the Hawk and whatnot. He did go a weird build, though. He built, he built Vlad's before he started his Necro. I think they're oh, just a little, huh. a little worried about taking those first couple fights. He pulls him back with the weave and the fours. Yeah, oh, we're gonna have a coil on the entirety of Vega. Sumail at very low HP though, and the dude comes down. You're seeing the advantage of Vega. Oh, the black, black hole. hole on a ton of heroes. Arteezy's in a lot of trouble. TPD does not have Grave, and that is three heroes that hit the deck. Universe looks to be next on the list, and Vega is just running away with this game. Nine to zero advantage, and the Roche. It was such a good initiation by Puck, but entirely countered by the fact that Vega had a stupidly fast mech. If they didn't have an Enigma here, EG could have won that fight, but because the mech oh, they're gonna get a team wide PPD in tons of trouble, has a TP available, but will cancel and then die. Oh boy, Vega. They, they just get so much out of that due to the fast mech. Like, it was a perfect initiation by Sumail, but Puck can't quite handle that just yet. Um, Earth Spirit as well got doomed, so he wasn't able to continuously put down Magnetize. Like, that's the counter to Earth Spirit. When he goes in, you just kill him. <laughs> if you burst him down, he isn't able to stretch out his low cooldowns and the extra damage from Magnetize. So Mech just counters them, they pick them off one by one, and really bad fight there for EG. And that almost... That was a team wipe with nothing going the way of EG. The Roshan goes to Vega, the Tier 2 Tower goes to Vega. They get literally everything. And now they're just going to continue to push, and I don't see why not. The only advantage they got out of that is that Vega used all of their good team fight cooldowns. So, no black hole, no doom. That's a good point. Sumail does have Coil up and Blink, and here we go. He's going to try to make something up here for EG. Coil onto Fear with the Knife Magnetize on the entirety of Vega Squadron. In the meantime, Mag getting soloed completely. It's a one for one as Fear drops to the deck. Pasha, in the meantime, at half HP, he's getting beaten down by Artesian Company. He deals so much damage despite being so far down in this game. Aegis is popped. EG is going to attempt to surround no one. And by that, they're going to run away. <laughs> by that, I mean they're going to run away. He does get the Sunder off, at least. So they were able to break the Aegis of the uh, Razor, and they ultimately did kill Doom and Night Stalker. Uh, the Fight Greed Cap actually gives them about a 1,000 gold advantage. It's not terrible for EG there. It also defends their Tier 1 tower, so that was pretty worth it, actually. Um, slight gold advantage, they burn the Aegis, and they prevent their opponents from getting more gold advantage. And now RTZ is going to be working on this, uh, what is this, a triple stack? Maybe a quad stack? It's gotta be stack? like a quad, yeah. That's, I think quad. some of it might have been taken out earlier, but it looks like a quad stack overall. He kills these really fast. This is the attack speed bonus that Beastmaster has. This is why he went Vlad's most likely, just because it gives more damage and um, some life steal to Terrorblade. Makes him stronger in the early game. Yeah, and Beastmaster, the universe should be finishing that level 1 Necro very shortly. In the meantime, on the other side of the board, Vega Squadron, Enigma getting very close to a BKB, and the only thing that's going to stop him well, I guess potentially there are a couple. You have the roar, the roar and then maybe if there's an Aghanim Scepter for Puck. Which he'd have to ult in before he uses BKB, and then Enigma would have to be pushed outside. No, it's, it's, it's only very, the secondary stun. So it is. A, it's a long shot. Yeah. I would like to maybe see, like... <laughs> <laughs> I would maybe like to see a roar that after the Dream Coil to possibly push them away. I think that would be pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the Sunset Announcer Pack is seriously a dream. I, at first it started as a joke, but now I kind of want to do it. Slacks, we should do that as a collaboration. Purge, you as well, man. Okay. Just a trifecta, you know? Just say the most obvious things possible. Oh, no, not again. <laughs> and that's the introductory sound when you open <laughs> the game. <laughs> not again. Don't open this game. <laughs> but... Uh, looking at the item progression for everybody else. So SNY was complete by Razor Spin. Oh. Yes! Thank you! Thank you so much, Slack. I can just die a happy man. Uh, I'm so surprised to see Enigma not max out Demonic Conversion, though. It's a very interesting skill build. Like, he loses a little bit of damage, like 10%, or, yeah, that's more than that. It's like 20% on the Eidolons, but he does get other strong abilities. Like, the Max Malphus is kind of nice. I think the reason he did this build is because they're actually very weak on disables on their team. Do you typically stop at level 2 Malefus until the rest is maxed, or how does it... How do you usually go like 4-4-1. Four, four, Top lane, fear. He gets... Gets the boulder off. Voided. 
and crippling fear as well. And there's gonna be some TP support in the form of Sumail, and I believe Mag is just gonna back off now. If that boulder hit, maybe they they're able to kill Mag here. By the way, Pasha picks up a plate mail in all likelihood will either be a Shiva's. I assume it's gonna be a Shiva's, but it could very well be an AC. I Do you would, think going yeah. a blink would be a good choice, or is that just not needed this game? Uh, blink's not a bad idea. Yeah, because if he gets a blink dagger. Um, he can initiate on Puck a little easier, although Puck is hard to catch. It, if you just press phase shift, you can blink away, guaranteed. Mm -hmm. um, I might just be better to do what he's doing. If he spends 1400, far less than a blink, he becomes almost impossible to kill in teamfights. He's getting to that point. If he goes like Shiva's and uh, BKB, for example, he just won't die. And he's still going to do a lot of damage offensively. So I think it's just safer to not chance it on whether or not he dooms somebody with a blink dagger and instead he can just walk in with drums and phase and doom somebody that's maybe not the best target but it's still pretty good yeah target. i mean it's still pretty con i mean he's not gonna have his great catch but at the same time he's tanky enough he can just walk in like he said which is literally what i just said <laughs> yes thank you i'm just reiterating no that in a different way no it's good okay it's good i do like the shivas a lot as well though he can clear out creeps from beastmaster with it and the plasma field he can nuke down terrorblade illusions a little bit faster eg is going to split push and take the tier one mid here but this is more of a a bad trade because they're gonna get a tier two instead yeah, and they're five not gonna man stop. Dodo. I don't see why they would stop. Vega's just gonna continue the pressure. The tier two tower might be taken out in the bot lane, the middle lane for sure if Artizi sticks around with that metamorphosis, but they have to worry about the tier three top as the entirety of Vega squadron is ready to go. Damage is BKB so high. with a 10 second duration is up for solo now on the Enigma. Doom's got a troll creep for some reason. Maybe to get a Doom off on the puck, he can ensnare him and then he can't face shift. I think that's why he got it. Well, there might be a trade here. Zarkeezy is just going to continue the pressure in the mid lane. Tier 3 tower taking tons of damage. Here comes Fear, going to sacrifice his life for the betterment of his team. Pops the magnetize, doing quite a bit of damage, but the melee rack is already dead in EG's favor. A very interesting trade, as they know that they can't really defend. And this is actually in EG's favor, I would say. Uh, yeah, completely. And then they're going to go bottom and take a tier 2 tower. That's that's uh, Terrorblade, man. He's got a Manta style, so he's just attacking so fast here. And they're just going to commit to this. I think yeah, they Vega have just to, continue. kind of. If they go back, they take an equal trade in a game where they're winning, yes, 13 to 2. So, like, they need to get a second Rax here, but I mean, Ortiz is also going to split push. It's also very difficult for them to TP out because Sumail is here with that Blink Coil initiation. Uh, He's gonna they're going to take this here 3. They're going to attempt to fall back. Stunned by Fear. Meanwhile, bottom lane. Metamorphosis is down, so they don't have to de deal with that much damage anymore. In fact, Vega might even be able to just stay in that shit. They might just reinitiate. Artizi right, TP'd back, but they don't quite know that. And the tower is falling. No one's gone back yet on Vega. All right, but they know that the Metamorphosis right, is down. They're going back. They're sending somebody back. I mean, without Metamorphosis, do you really fear the Terrorblade? Um, no, not I mean, He does a decent really, amount of damage, but, but he's melee. But the important thing is that he can push rapidly. And they lost a Rax there. They actually just 100% traded with EG, which is amazing for EG where they're at in the game. They both got uh, a Rex set plus a tier 3 on top of that. And with that, some gold going the way of each respective team, obviously. A lot of gold, actually, because of the, the buffs to that in the last couple patches, I want to say. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, Sioma on the Witch Doctor is about 400 away from Aghanim Scepter. And speaking of Ags, we have one on Night Stalker, and this is where it becomes very difficult for EG. He has the gem as well, so they can just counter ward, take complete map control, despite being down amid racks right now. Honestly, I think they're okay with that trade. Although it's technically in EG's favor, I don't think uh, Vega's going to have much issue pushing still. Yeah, I'm going to agree with that. Like, it, it sucks that they had to trade equal, but they've got so many big items right now that the next fights are going to be so easy. Enigma's got Blink Black Hole with BKB. Like, it's going to be so hard for EG to deal with that. If he catches the Beastmaster in it, that's a four-second... Um, yeah, they've the almost got eggs on Witch Stalker. They've got eggs on Night Stalker. They've got all items they need. Yeah, it's looking pretty good for Vegas still, despite getting that Rax down. The Primal Roar is the only Primal Roar is the only thing that'll stop Enigma Black Hole. But if you have to black, or if you have to roar the Enigma, that means Night Stalker, Razor, and Doom are just going to run around and do whatever the hell they want. Yeah. They've got the gem up as well, so they're going to be looking for Dire Ward. So we'll find one here. Got a little bit of a fresh ward. Oh, they get the courier though. Oh, what was on that? It was an ultimate orb and point booster. That was the Scotty. That's so big. He was actually waiting for 50 gold there. He had 50 more gold. <laughs> yeah. Literally one last hit at any point in the game, he would have a Scotty right now and his courier wouldn't be dead. And now that's set for three minutes, which means that this gold advantage that Arteezy has on his hero is worth 3,000 less. So he's equivalent to basically less farm than everybody on Vega. Yeah. Not that everybody. Dying. But yeah. Well, the top three cores is what, I'm, what I mean. Right. So the question is, does Vega just take full advantage of this and push right now? Or They're, they're going to want to, but EG is very aware of that. the fact that Vega is going to want to push. So now they're just going to go 
split push instantly. They're gonna put everybody in position for split push. So, but even still, that's so hard to, to for them to do because with Ags on Night Stalker, they can't even do the tri typical hide in trees trick. So, I think they were actually just waiting for the courier to deliver the Ags for the Witch Doctor, who now has it in place. Okay. And that is dirty. Absolutely Very good against dirty. Terrorblade. It's gonna shred his illusions completely. He won't be able to keep these alive anymore. And they're, if anything, they're gonna facilitate more bounce damage to EG. Well, it was a really Shiva's, bad. by the way, on the on the Doom. On the other side, Fear picks up. He had this in the last fight, I believe, but Veil is an amazing item yeah. for him, uh, and along with Puck. Other than that, they don't have a whole lot of magic damage, but still, yeah. very worth the, the pickup. They need to initiate with Dream Quest Silence and then let Fear go in. I think it's the only way they win these fights. Darknesses, Pop, Terrorblade, the Illusion, getting the damage sap. No one doesn't get that much. Gets 52, not too shabby, though. 40 seconds left for Roshan to actually... Uh, come back into the fray, and Vega might just want to go for that. I mean, they have the map and uh, the vision advantage. Well, they just got weaved, so fighting right now is a little scary. Like, EG just wants to defend until they get their items. Um, they're not I mean, all Vega in. had the advantage last game, right? They don't want to make the same mistake just twice. Yeah, no kidding. And this game is definitely more in their favor. The fact that they traded Rax is, is pretty worrying, though. If they just would have gotten a single Rax and not had a trade, then they would be stupidly far ahead. But now it's it could be a loss. They've got to be careful in the next fight. Oh, Roche is about to spawn, and Vega will not see that, at least not yet, as they walk right out of the pit. But they're just going to keep their heroes in the vicinity. EG knows that Roche is up as the boar enters into the realm of darkness. But it's daytime, and they don't have uh, darkness on Night Stalker, so they actually can't really take a fight for a bit. Yeah, that's true. It's bad for Vega. 60 seconds with no... or 50 seconds with no darkness, and... Does EG know that though? Are they really keeping? Uh, I mean, obviously it's not gonna be nighttime for a while. And they know that darkness just ended. So, do they want to go for a hail mary Roche? I don't think they can go take I mean, it. They, but they've they... seen the Ags on Witch Doctor. It's so scary to play against that. It's it's really scary. I mean, they're standing in the area. Arteezy's TPing over, so they might try to take it now. Roche or the Curry's up in ten seconds. So, and there's the smoke. They smoked right under the ward though. Oh. So Vega does know that they're there, and that they might be approaching the Roche pit. But no one's on the mid lane pushing out the mid lane. Yeah, and he doesn't really, really have a fast way to get there other than just walking over the old fashioned way as Universe gets doomed right off the bat. And we're seeing how the power of Infernal Blade as well. It doesn't matter if he gets denied, he won't. He will die. And Fear gets silenced right in the middle of his rolling boulder, attempting to run away as the coils used defensively. And this is not the way EG wants to fight, but the buyback on Universe, I think this is going to be the Hail Mary for them to try oh, to defend. Trouble. As PPD is just stuck within Roche, and down he goes. So Mail jumps in, BKD popped by no one. RTG trying to right click away. With all oh, the big black hole on RTG, do they have actually enough damage to take him out? RTG with Thunder available. He's going to try to get it off, but will die right before the animation finishes. And Fear will be next on the deck, and Vega Squadron cleaning up without issue. The dieback for Universe, and this is as close to GG as we're going to get. Yeah, they got a double Necro 3 kill, too, so that's an extra 400 gold. They just absolutely made that fight look pretty one-sided. Just heroes out of position one at a time, and they run them over. There was a good boulder smash on the Witch Doctor, at least, so it made the Death Ward Oh, so going but... for this. He drops his TP. kind of has to go. Yeah, I believe. I, I completely agree. He's going to get Malathus up. It's going to be very difficult for him to do so now. And... Solo within the vicinity. Nice blink out from some mail. It looks like he'll live through the day, but the A just goes the way of Razor, and they can just barrel down bottom if they want right now. I mean, Smail just hasn't had a huge amount of impact on this game, and that's because their team only has two kills. Like, he's 0 2 and 1. He's farmed really fast. He's had some good ultimates, but they just can't quite get picks on, on Vega. It's very similar to what EG drafted Dyer's last game. Draft tower. heroes that are very hard to kill. Dyer's you have maybe one squishy support on the back line, but as long as you have gold advantage and mech and vlads and stuff like that, then your opponents can't win the team fights. Mm -hmm. So now with a nice waning rift, he's going to back up though with the illusory orb. Mech is popped. I mean, Vega is still very strong. Obviously, Black Hole is down and Doom is up in 20 seconds, but. The fact that it's about to turn nighttime for a very long time now means yep. that Vega's gonna just. It's gonna be so difficult for EG to get back in this game. Yeah, that, that last fight kind of changed everything. It was looking almost like EG could come back, and they still can, but Vega's got a good spot. So they need to push out mid wave. That one's pretty important. I, they might as well push mid, frankly, because there's no 2 3 tower there. They don't yeah. have to pressure bottom. So if they can just go back, keep bot lane pushed out a little bit. They've got good wards for it as well, so they can see EG beginning. Uh, their attempts at split push. So push out mid, keep bottom pushed in a little bit. Top lane is going to be pretty fine, and then just go high ground mid with the Aegis and uh, see if you can take it. 
Well, no one did go the build that we were discussing earlier, the SMY into BKB. We were debating between the two, kind of, mm -hmm. and he went both. And now he's going for a butterfly. Although, Great technically, choice. it could be a halberd. Is um, halberd good this game? It's not bad. It's I mean, not, not bad. Arteezy's not going to get a BKB. Yeah, they can well, figure he, out. He can manta it off, though, right? Or is that not uh, work? I think so. And he can figure out which one is the real Terrorblade very easy, assuming he hasn't used manta. Yeah. Like, they just do a little damage and halberd him. But I think he's better off just going butterfly, honestly, because even... Even that small amount of evasion can make a big difference, the extra 8% or whatever it is. So, I kind of I mean, like the butterfly. Extra attack speed as yeah, well is going to synergize super well with Static Link. I mean, the only thing that's really, with the BKB, Puck doesn't pose any threat. And the only real threat is Arteezy's right clicks, which did a lot of damage last fight. And Sunder is always a huge threat. If you almost kill Terrorblade and he gets the Sunder off, then you will lose your Razor. That's how yeah. they lost the ages before. He was before. so freaking close to getting that Sunder off. The animation, that was nerfed as well, right? Uh, I don't remember. He did get a range increase, but it was uh, Malefus stunned him, so he didn't get it off. Yeah. Here comes the fight, though. Aether lens on Enigma as well. You can cast Black Hole from pretty far away. And this might be the last stand for EG in Game 3. Vega trying to extend this series to a Game 4. And the range racks will go down pretty damn easily. Although the fortification is popped by EG. On razor, so bad. There's the Veil. Yeah. Veil of Discord used. Mag not getting stunned up by the Earth Spirit. Of course, he does have Aegis and doesn't really care too much about dying. Uh, it'll be up for another th two minutes, I believe. And this is the amazing thing about Razor. He can just steal damage from an illusion. And it's like, okay, I have 140 extra damage from your illusion. Thank you very much. I'm trying to slow things down with the illusions, but now he's going to go for it. Yeah, two minutes left on that. On Pretty that Aegis, do they have any heals for no one? Do they actually want to do so? There's a black hole. Oh, he got two with the death ward on the side. And Sumail drops to the deck, although he gets grazed at the last moment, attempting to get out. And he's going to yield up. Looks like he might live through this engagement, yeah, in fact, but Arteezy is doomed. And down he goes. There's no grave to save him. He's just going to take away. Might get denied, but no. PPD's right clicks do literally nothing. Yeah. And no one getting healed up by the Voodoo Restoration. That's going to be a free rack, essentially, for Vega. As they. They're just dominating That's beyond control right now. Such a huge black hole by Solo. Catching two heroes like that. The uh, death ward was a little bit improperly placed, but they did overall win the fight. They could, If they got like four kills there, the game basically ends, though. So the fact that they were able to save a couple people was pretty big for EG. The death ward, I don't know if it was improperly, it was improperly uh, targeting. Yeah, it was, anything, it was right? hitting somebody to the far left instead of the guys in the black hole. I think it was just an illusion, if hole. I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and it was too far away from them, so it didn't bounce. So yeah. it was... Kind of like he didn't have an eggs on Witch Doctor. But. but, I mean, Vega's so far ahead at this point, it just doesn't even matter. You can just do your spells in any in any uh, order you want, and it'll just be fine. Yeah, most likely. Ghost so. Scepter on Enigma right now. He is... Yeah, I didn't even realize he had Aether Lens as well. <laughs> yeah. That's an interesting one. So, they still are going to have the Aegis for a little bit, as long as they go heal really fast, and then swing back to the bot lane, then they can possibly do a high ground push while uh, still having Aegis. It's going to be about 30 seconds. I don't think they have time. Oh, it goes away at That's five, five minutes. minutes. Yeah, okay, yeah. it's really close. Yeah. Okay, so no push with that, but I mean, they still have such a big gold advantage. They might as well just go. Unless, all right. I mean, they if they lose EG. the game, if they lose. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna say they wait for Rush. If off. Vega wants to wait five, six minutes for Rush, I will not blame them. I will yeah. not make fun of them. I'm gonna be <laughs> like, this is a. They're Slacks in a position will make now. fun of them. I'm sure. <laughs> if I get some stats about Hoth and you lose at a twenty-three thousand gold disadvantage, that would be great. But. <laughs> Vega losing this game would be ridiculous. Well, they don't have they to wait. Really don't want to let it happen. They don't have so to wait too ahead. long. It'll be a three-minute uh, respawn. Well, okay. not a three-minute. It'll be what is it? A two-minute? Wait, eight minutes? No, that's almost. That's close to the the minimum time for Roche. Just a few seconds mm -hmm. extra. Well, Enigma currently doing some slow pushing here. Eg, this is going to be their hail Mary. Mag is initiated upon with the coil. They might get this kill. Eventually. He doesn't have buyback though. 800 gold. All right. Well, they got a gem out of it. That's pretty. All right, they're in the base now. Yeah, they're in the base. And with Metamorphosis, it's pretty scary, actually. Vega. Uh, no one might get caught. Get oh, BKB, no. No one roared up, pops the BKB in time, but the right clicks will be dealing so oh. much damage. He has buyback. Might have to use Pasha it. Pasha is doing Pasha. Looks to be the next on the list. He's got down buyback. He goes. Arteezy, doomed up, attempting to run away. Solo jumps in. No black hole to speak of. Pops his Ghost Scepter Universe. Looks like he'll be the sacrifice for EG. There's a right click, should be able oh to do it. He's keeping that with some 100 HP as Sioma is being right clicked by Arteezy, who's no still in Metamorphosis. And Vega, there's no way, right? There's no freaking they way they just, do They this. just went one by one, and they didn't have Black Hole. It's such a good place for EG to fight. That is a 6,000 gold net worth swing. Oh, yeah, that's a awesome. huge Black Hole as Pasha comes in with the right click. Sumail drops to the deck. 
Fear is next on the list as Arteezy is still right clicking, and no one. Is this a dieback? He's down for 80 They've seconds. They've got to kill Arteezy, but Arteezy he's still alive. Right clicking Doom with the Scotty, slowing him to a high degree. Okay, and now it's a 3v1. I don't know if he's going to get it. Although PPD is in the other side of the cliff with the grave in one second. Arteezy does not have Thunder to work with. He can't not he cannot get out of this base right now. And PPD, no mana to speak of, finally pops the Arcane Boots. Buyback by Sumail, by the way. All right, he's here. As Vega. Mag is going for fear. Solo with the Malathus should be plenty of damage to take him out as PPD gets right clicked by Pasha. So Mail gets here a little bit too late. I don't even know what to think of that fight. <laughs> Jeffrey was incredible. EG almost could have won the game there, but it looks so good for them. But as soon as he loses Metamorphosis, it's over. Like he becomes a huge threat that's hitting him for like 300 physical damage, and his illusions are hitting for like 150, and then all of a sudden everything goes away. But he got absolute value out of his metamorphosis there and it put them a little bit back into this game they got a melee racks out of that um i'm sure we're gonna see a huge gold swing that was like ten thousand gold that eg just got from that team fight and that yep. cost them one smoke and one buyback on puck where and a lot of buybacks on vega and this just shows how <laughs> how amazing eg is as a team and how well respected they are by their opponents because vega has been playing super safe and they still find themselves in a horrible position in that particular engagement i mean they're still ahead but that that hurt big time. That was that was incredible. Great Diffuse a blade, by the way. Now on um, Arteezy. Remove silence from Night Stalker. Um, that's about it. Also gonna slow your opponents. That's pretty big. I mean, with the illusion, he's gonna drain some a decent amount of mana yeah, as well. Yeah, it's it's even clear that Razor actually just can't fight the metamorphosis with multiple illusions. He doesn't have the items for it yet. He needed either an AC or he needs his butterfly to be finished. And he doesn't have those yet. He's, he's missing. been sitting on this item forever. Well, Talisman. Also because he just bought back for a yeah. thousand gold. And that's... Well, really he died dangerous. back. More he, than did anything. he die back? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He would have butterfly now. If he had butterfly, he's fine against Terrible. He can kind of deal with it. But now, he's behind. Well, Vega knows that Roche is up. I think they know he's up at least. It's been a while. Uh, and there's the darkness, and they definitely see it. Meg's moving in. He will spot the uh, observer on the high ground, but it's just about gone. He, well, he'd have to move an inch in, but they got to stop the push first. They can't lose another range barracks. That would be a little too unfortunate for them. I mean, the good news is that they have a tier two top, so mega creeps aren't really a possibility for EG unless that's taken out, uh, which Arteezy is going to be working on with these illusions. That's the thing. That's the thing you have to fear about. Uh, a Terra Blaze, he can split push very easily. Yeah, he but... doesn't have BOTs at least, but picks up another ultimate orb. I don't know what he's building with this. Lincolns, maybe? Um, <laughs> Hex? Not, sh not sure. Interesting. More stats, the better. As Roshan will be taken out by Vega. The boar will scout it out. I think EG's going to be way too late to the party. If this is Aegis and Cheese. I'm surely Vega's scared, though. Like, they don't really see where EG is. They do get the Aegis, though. Um, phase boots on the ground. Who's got the cheese then? Okay, it's Doom. He drops his phase boots. He's got cheese boots to travel now. I think he can deal with the Terra Blade at this point. He's got to doom the Terra Blade though. I think that's pretty clear. They've got to deal with the Terra Blade. Terra Blade's by far EG's damage. Nothing else even comes close. And he has the cheese. And Aegis on the Razor, who I assume wants to finish the Butterfly before, or even just say for buyback. Well, if something disastrous occurs, but it's going to be on cooldown for another two minutes and 40 seconds. Like for Vega, does it feel like if you wait, it's fine? Or I, I don't know about that. I, like scary. they could lose if they lose the next fight, they lose the game. It actually can happen because they've got four four people lost buyback in the last fight. Like it is so dangerous now right now for Vega. They've got the Aegis, but pushing is still scary. It could still go really bad for them. They were fine before that last fight, but EG got maximum value out of that fight. I mean, that just goes to show that the, the trading, it kind of bites them in the ass when they traded the racks, because yeah. if that never happened and they had lost this fight that just happened, then they'd still be perfectly fine. Yep, entirely fine. But now they have to constantly worry about being two racks down, well, or even with racks, essentially. They've got to get all the waves pushed out, and then they've got to stick five, and then they've got to force a fight bottom. So EG needs to counter that. They need to push out the other two lanes so that there's always the threat of BOT TPs or uh, TPing the Beastmaster Hawks or something like that. And then they have to try to take a fight 
where they get to engage one on one if possible, and they don't group up for black holes, and they don't get doomed on the wrong heroes. The tier two tower was taken out top, by the way, so mega creeps are now an option for EG if they just want to go all in or something to that nature. I mean, they could just go thrown technically. Uh, the butterfly is finished, so there's not going to be saving for buyback for no one because he won't be able to farm it up before the Aegis is used and. I mean, I th what, what did you say? You think it's a good choice? Yeah, um, the extra evasion, the extra damage increase is going to be huge. He can also use it to run fast. If he's in a really bad position, he can just activate Flutter and run away from the Terra Blade. He does have um, Diffusal Blade, though, so he can actually permanently slow, more or less. Unless he has BKB up. But he was getting kind of crushed even through BKB. But luckily, they I think they have an AC as well on Vega right now. Um, I, yeah, it's on the Night Stalker. So they've got Vlad's and an AC. They've got 10 armor on everybody from an aura for that. So they should be able to resist the damage coming from Terrible. It's all going to come down to the fight, though. Lincoln's is up on Arteezy as well. So no single target Doom. Doom is going to be a lot harder to land. Indeed. And let's see what they have to take it off. Uh, I mean, they have Malefice and some other spells. You have to be somewhat close to do that, though. It's just going to be a real hassle for him to get to. Uh, no one taking a ton of damage, and the Aegis is completely wasted. EG getting a huge kill there. What a huge little fight for them. And now the defensive weave, and Vegas, I, I don't know, man. I think they're just... I think they just need to back. I don't know about need to back, but I think they might. Like, Razor's just not the high ground hero that they want him to be. Actually, none of their heroes are really that amazing at just ultra tanking. They get the Hawk at least, so no vision for EG, but I think what they need to do is just smoke and run up through the mid. They can't just like do a slow siege. It's too dangerous. They already lost an Aegis for it. Like if they still had Aegis, uh, he's got cheese now, I guess, but like he just takes so much damage. All it takes is like a boulder smash and a veil, and all of a sudden the nukes do so much more damage. It's the veil that did that, really. Sumail now has a Lotus Orb, by the way. It is going to be so difficult to doom Arteezy in these fights. And I mean, honestly, uh -huh. if... If you get rid of the Lincolns, it's almost worth just dooming yourself with Arteezy. As long as Arteezy gets uh, doomed, like, would you agree with that? I don't know about that. It's 750 pure damage. That's pretty severe. They're going to try to fight mid. Can they catch Sumail? No one breaks it, though. He spots Arteezy, uses chain link. Oh, they're going to go in. Here's the black hole on Arteezy. But there's the counter initiation from Universe Solo getting beaten down by Arteezy. Witch Pops Dr. Ult. He's attempting to use his ult. Finally gets it off. And there's the Doom onto Arteezy. No Lotus Orb in sight. Solo drops to the deck. Arteezy trying to do as much damage before he inevitably drops. The Grave will keep him alive. And Sioma dies. That's three dead for Vega. As EG looking decently well. But Arteezy finally dies in this fight. And here comes a huge ult from Fear. No one in a lot of trouble. And like I said, he does not have buyback. Four dead, and soon to be a team wipe as EG might actually win this game. This is unreal. There are some buybacks here for Vega, so they don't lose here for sure. And actually, EG is just going to buy out and go straight for yeah. throne, I think. That's their best chance to win the game here. They buy back on everybody. That's going to force almost everyone here on Vega to do it as well. They're not going to have Wish Doctor for 30 seconds. They almost won that fight with the Wish Doctor ulti, but then Sumail went on the back line and interrupted it. So there's the three buybacks. And the game has truly gotten even closer. I can't even imagine that, but it has. Metamorphosis is down for 80 seconds, though. So very important thing to keep in mind. And I don't even know if EG wants to fight without that. Well, I really feel that that's the, their main physical damage right now. On the bright side, EG traded two buybacks for four or three, I think. Four? They got four out of that. Two for four buyback trade here. I mean, it's gotten to a point where Vega just has to like all out push. Uh, like go for an all in play here. I, I mean, they're not winning these fights. They have to delay until they get Black Hole again, and then they can take a fight. That's what they have to do. And it's got to be like a five-man fight. Or they can wait for the next Roche and not waste the Aegis this time. Cheese, was that you? It must have been used. I don't see it on anybody. Yeah, right I believe it was on Razor in that last fight. Just didn't quite work out. Almost a BKB on Witch Doctor. That could be really huge, actually. Then he could guarantee his ultimate. It got interrupted in the last fight. They could have killed Arteza a lot earlier if he didn't get interrupted. And Vega's lead, which at one point was above a 20,000 net worth lead is now 5,000. That is actually insane. Yeah. Fear got a lot done in that last fight, though. Like, it's so nice when our spirit can come in later in the fight when there's less focus, and then he can get a lot of value out of his Magnetize, because every time he resets it, it's doing an extra 150 damage, uh, extra, extra 450 damage if he gets full text. Oh, EG. Smoking up. This could potentially be the final fight of Captain's Draft 3.0. And no Black Hole, 15. Yeah, Black Hole should be up for this fight. And they're definitely not going to want to fight without it. 
And there's a counter initiation smoke or a counter smoke for Vega yeah, in play as well. Universe is seen. Samael Great smoke. could potentially jump someone with the blink coil. And Arteezy, of course, has Metamorphosis up. He's going to have the illusions in base. And just the, the fact that the fight is starting in the Radiant base means that EG could have a, a pretty damn good advantage because if they get just a couple kills, they can go for throne. Cherry Blades on high ground. He's got a plate mail as well. He's very survival right now. But they can initiate at any moment with Black Hole. Oh, here it comes. Arteezy looks to be initiated upon, but Tasha is getting destroyed. Here's a Black Hole onto Arteezy. He has yet to use his Thunder. He can get it off in time. He gets dropped 90 seconds out of the play. Solo in the meantime getting initiated on by Sumail. Looks like he'll drop it to be a one for one exchange. PPD is next, and Vega doing a nice job in this fight. Fear in the meantime. He tries to get a rolling boulder, but it actually does not go anywhere. Nice Yules by Sumail. Fear and Sumail on the run, PPD buys back into the game, and Vega wins this fight handily. Right. No Sunder comes offline. That was actually huge. Ooh, Fear messed up a little bit. He needed to use a rolling boulder there, but now he's going to go down. That's going to be a gem. You know what's the, the, what won that fight entirely? It was the, the black hole from Solo. The fact that it gave them four seconds to try to kill Terrorblade did everything. And then they doomed as well. It did uh, Lotus Orb Reflect, but it guaranteed the kill. And again, that's all of EG's damage. If they keep Terrorblade alive in fights, he's going to put out the DPS to kill all of Vega. So they get a couple. They've got 40 seconds to push down mid here. And I don't know if that'll be enough to end the game. Yeah, it's actually, I didn't realize how, like, why is this cooldown? <laughs> There's death time. I guess he died right away and the fight just continued for another 20, 30 seconds. And it's pretty early. It's 44 minutes in. He's only level 19. There's a lot of things that are contributing to the low respawn. So they can maybe Radiance take the tier three, maybe a tier four tower. Another curry gets taken out. Who's is that? That was uh, Vegas, in fact, uh, by the by hawk who? or something, or the the, the hawk. All right, they go back. <laughs> if the hawk could attack, that would be great. <laughs> All right, so we got a reset. I mean, Roche is not quite up yet. It's uh, about to be up. It actually just spawns. Um, if they run the night over here, they'll see it. All right, they do see it. Roche is there. Ah, oh, it's such a tough so one. So the next question is, can they steal Roche? They've got to push out the bot lane at least because always having to go back to defend the tier fours is too dangerous. So push out the lanes, keep vision on Roche, try to take a fight or take Roche when EG is on their base. That's what they have to do. I mean, each respective team is basing their fights off of cooldowns. Doom, or not just Doom, but Enigma Black Hole is like a necessity in these fights. As we've seen, yeah. it's like the only way they've been able to kill the Terror Blade. And then on the other side, Metamorphosis, although it's not an ultimate, it kind of is. Yeah, more <laughs> And that has a ridiculous 140 second cooldown for a regular skill. And they just can't fight without it. Well, Vegas starting to scale into some items again. Uh, Razor has almost nothing, but Doom's up to 2,800 gold past his Perseverance. So he's very close to finishing his Refresher Orb. And if he gets that and he gets two Dooms off in the fight, it would have to be a crazy one-sided fight for that not to be a victory for them. Well, they're attempting Roche. He's got a Blink as well, by the way. I don't know if we pointed that out, but... Who? Uh, the Doom does. Oh, okay. So you can blink Doom fights. Oh, Solo picks up the Arcane Rune. If he uses Black Hole, they might have it for the next engagement, if there is a next engagement. And Roche is at about 30% oh, HP. Fear gets a stun onto Mag, and there's a Metamorphosis coming into play. Mag taking a lot of damage at half HP to start this fight. Solo with the Black Hole again onto Arteezy with the Death Ward, and he gets doomed. He's going to get... Healed up a little bit by PPD, but it looks as if he's going to fall one way or another. A nice initiation from Sumail, but he drops shortly it's after. In the meantime, Vega wins this fight. Two buybacks for EG. Arteezy is dead for 70 seconds, and they know he does not have buyback. They're trying to slow things down if they can. He wants to kill Pasha as well, but he's getting healed now. Yeah, Vega relatively low overall in the Roche pit, but they're going to get it. Razor gets the Aegis. Sumail trying to push out the lanes as much as he can. And Vega just TP's back. They all go back. And with that Arcane Rune, like you pointed out, a lower cooldown of Black Hole. It's only, it was only 110 seconds instead. A massive difference here. That means the next fight, they're going to have it again. And again and again, Enigma keeps winning team fights with Black Holes. He blinks, he Midnight Pulses, which does 5% pure damage per second, and Black Holes on top of that. And Terrorblade just dies. Now PPD four staffs to safety. Pasha really wants to oh, find this kill. Solo with the Malefice cancels the TP, and there's no way PPD's getting out of this. With the Infernal Blade, he's just going to delay the inevitable with that Grave, and down he goes. And of course, even when Arteezy is up, they know he won't have ult for another, what is it, like 57 seconds still. They could potentially just push mid right now. Or they definitely lane. can, especially with the Aegis up. So uh, 33,000 more gold on Razor. Um, not sure what he buys next. Maybe a Scotty or something like that, but... I'd have to rewatch these fights for... I don't know if you've been paying attention for the Universe Roars. On yeah, I've that, seen maybe one or two. There's so much stuff going on. Who knows? Maybe um, 
Like if he's having Night trouble, Stalker, probably oh, Night Stalker true. finds him and silences him. Yeah, and if Night Stalker point. does that in conjunction with what Solo does, then it's game winning. Yeah. But I, I haven't. You know, everything's so crazy. I just death stare at Terrible and see if he lives. <laughs> Terrible, like, right is he gonna get right doomed? Clicking. Will he die? He gets grave, buys in five seconds. You know. Will he sunder him. ever? <laughs> I think we've seen one good sunder this game. It's a very yeah. tough skill to get off in these engagements. Against Doom, like it's almost impossible. Yeah. If it's a silence, yeah, totally, you can get away with that with the Fusil Blade or something. But all right, well, Vega. Getting close to high ground here. Terrorblade does have metamorphosis now. Just comes off cooldown. And if they can somehow just make him waste that, that would be huge for Vega. Who's this? No, he doesn't have his play button anymore. What happened? I think he sold it. Now he bought a helmet of the Dominator or something. Oh, okay. For life steal, I guess. He can life steal if he gets doomed. Maybe that's the solution. Oh, so nails, doing some chip damage with the Veil of Discord. It's not really chip damage at this point. Solo's a little low on mana here. Uh, he doesn't have a slow ring like he used to. He might not have enough for his combo here if he's not careful. Right, well, Darkness has popped. Tier 3 will go down. And Vega working on extending this series. This grand final of Captain Jeff 3.0 to game 4. Can they do it? So male, more damage upon no one. They don't have the mech. It was just used recently. But the Voodoo Restoration will do a little bit of work to keep them in this fight. And they can just continue to do... Although the creeps are not in the base. So actually the backdoor of protection should be there for EG. Oh, it wow. feels like Vega you're, just needs to push bottom lane. Okay, well, they're going to attempt to take this out, but now they'll realize that the fortification, or the, the backdoor protection is up. They can get the range back, at least. And they can Stun get the less. range shortly. Finally get it, as no one might use the Aegis here. Pasha, Lotus Orb applied, attempting to run away. The reflection just so annoying to deal with, especially as the later the game goes, the better it scales. Vlad's is helping a lot, it's keeping no one alive a lot more. But the weave and everything is just slowing things down a lot. I mean, that's the thing, with Reflection you're gonna get all the auras back on the other team, so it kinda cancels each yeah, other out Yeah, that's actually degree, right? a good point, I totally forgot about that. So, what auras do we have to work with? We have the AC, AC on Mag, Vlad's. and Vlad's, and is that oh. it? Doom's Pack Leader aura. Oh yeah! That one's also not bad. I mean, that's, dude, that's 20%? like 20%. Well, that plus or it's 30. That yeah. plus Vlad's gives their team 45% damage increase. That's so much. And Terrorblade has a lot of base damage. That's actually insane yes. for him. That gives him like 100 and 120 damage or something. It's pretty good. I do like the Satanic pickup though. Well, he hasn't gotten Satanic yet, but that's what he needs to do. He needs to have an item that allows him to regen through Doom. If he can do that and stay alive, then the Grave actually matters. If Grave keeps him up when he's being chain stunned and he's at 1% and he's hitting for, I don't know, 100 HP per hit, that can make all the difference. Does Doom not stop lifesteal? Only if you get an Ags. So Only Ags, then. is that a potential pickup here for nope. Pasha? <laughs> not enough slots. Maybe after Drum. Um, he does have Refresh Orb, but it's a possibility, but I don't think it's justifiable. Only if you're against like a Huskar or a PA or something, you really need to remove their passive. All right, well, Vega is going to group up bottom lane. They again have above a 20,000 gold. It doesn't really matter that much anymore because one fight could be the difference between a win and a loss. As no one, I'm sure he's going to pop his ult very shortly. I might just wait for the Aegis to actually go away as uh, Samel comes in for more chip damage. Pasha with that Shiva's EG needs to defend this. This is going to be mega creeps. They're, They're going to try to go for safe. some collateral damage or collateral okay. something. They do not want to win or do not want to lose. <laughs> they do not want to win this game. <laughs> they just gave up completely. Fear, get grave. That's actually pretty big. They're not going to have it for the Terrible if this fight continues. And Fear will go down one way. Meanwhile, mid lane, we have the push from Arteezy. Metamorphosis is popped. Can they cancel TPs? Oh, watch Dude, universe. He's going to go for Solo. Solo pops the Ghost Scepter. Pasha getting right click away. The Doom will go on Arteezy as well as Universe. And there's the ball that can come in place. And this should be it. Vega Squadron doing a very nice job of coming back into this game after they were up by a million gold and a buyback PPD will not do a whole lot. Vega's got to feel so good right now. That was such sick play from Doom. He blinked past Arteezy to go for the back lane, knowing that Universe was going to be waiting for the black hole. He dooms Universe, which guarantees no black hole, and then he had to wait for the Enigma to come forward and break the Lincolns, which is why he didn't do anything there for two seconds. So once the Lincolns was broken, he does the second Doom, and the black hole secures the double kill. So looks like Vega's going to win it, probably. It's not over <laughs> yet. We've, I said that earlier, <laughs> yeah. and, it, and then EG had well, the most the incredible thing. fight. This is the thing. Cheese is now on Razor still. And the biggest thing of all is Terrorblade. Arteezy does not have ult for er, ult, but he doesn't have Metamorphosis for 70 seconds, and Vega definitely knows this. Yeah, that's going to be huge. They should be able to barrel down mid in all likelihood, unless there's some miracle coming from EG. No buybacks for them, so it's going to be a three on five. 
for this engagement. Uh, they can kill Arteezy. Uh, reflection of Arteezy at half HP. Oh, he's going oh low. my god, he's getting so much damage applied, oh, and down he goes. That is a dieback. And, and Vega Squadron extends this to game four. My what goodness. What a game. It's, they almost lost to a 39 to 19, or 39 to 13 game. <laughs> Yeah. And they almost won that. That was incredible. I don't know if that bodes well for, for Vega in the long run. I mean, Jesus. they had 20k gold disadvantage, and they took that team fight mid. It was just perfect circumstances, catching one Vega hero, then they run in, lose another one, buyback, lose another one, buyback, lose another one, buyback. It was like ultimate panicked, we're going to win this game team fight into, oh my god, we could lose this game. But EG almost pulls it back in the most incredible game. Easily the best game so far in this series, but of course it is only game three of the